Hey guys, slightly less niche internet micro celebrity here, and today I'm here to explain the new NBA CBA to you. Now that the season and the draft are done and free agency is rolling around, I think it would be a good idea to explain the CBA and how it will affect the league in the future. Let's start with the biggest star of this year's CBA, the second apron. The second apron is another luxury tax threshold for anybody who reaches $17.5 million above the salary cap or around $179.5 million in salary uh, for more severe punishments. Second apron punishments include the loss of the mid-level exception, a ban on trading cash, the inability to accept more salary in a trade than a team sends out, the inability to trade first round picks seven years into the future, and the inability to sign players on the buyout market. These punishments were drawn up in an effort to stop super teams from being created. To give you an idea of what these punishments would have done, in 2021, the Suns would not have been able to sign Jay Crowder. In 2021, the Nets would not have been able to trade for James Harden. In 2022, the Warriors would have not been able to sign Dr. DiVincenzo and a majority of teams that go on to trade for a third star wouldn't be able to do it because they wouldn't be able to trade their picks. And teams that stay in the second apron for too long, their first round pick will be dropped down to the 30th pick regardless on how they perform. So a team like the Golden State Warriors in 2020, when they had the second pick and drafted James Wiseman, they wouldn't have been able to do that because they were a second apron team. There are some other things in the new CBA that I didn't go over. Like for instance, now there is an in-season tournament. Non-Supermax extensions are now not just a possible 20% increase in salary, but a 40% increase in salary. If you want to win any NBA award, you would have to play 65 games. And players can now take sponsorships with gambling companies or weed companies, and they can also purchase minority stakes in NBA teams, WNBA teams, or other franchises in sports. But this all kind of cultivates into one single question. How will this affect the NBA in the future? This will mean a lot more player movement. So for teams like the Lakers, the Clippers, the Suns, the Bucks, the Warriors, and the Celtics, who are all already in the second apron, they're gonna have to trade and shed some salary. I mean, you already see this with teams like the Warriors. Chris Paul's an expiring deal that they just traded for. And teams like the Celtics and Suns have decided, let's go all in now and worry about the later later. Although that might hurt them in the long run because both of those players don't make the team much better. And they're just gonna have to get rid of one of their guys anyways. So uh, we'll see how a lot of this unfolds. Thank you for watching this video all the way. If you did enjoy, don't expect any more videos because I've officially signed with the Phoenix Suns to be their starting point guard of the future. Thank you and goodbye.